We've got brand new footage and information about all the Odin powers from Assassin's Creed Valhalla's upcoming expansion, Dawn of Ragnarok. Jordan attended a special event from Ubisoft where he saw Odin and the new Uyghur powers in action, like the power of the Raven for example, which is really a game changer. And we got some exclusive info thanks to our interview with the creative director, Mikhail Lozanov, and I hope I pronounced this right, so a ton to go over. But first, hey, Jordan here. I wanted to tell you about one of my go-to mobile games that I've been playing for a really long time now, Raid Shadow Legends, and I totally use my QR code that you can see on screen or the link in the video description to play it for free. I really like the character designs and especially the bosses like the Arcane Keep Guardian that deals more damage to your champions if they have no buffs active. So in this case, it's really smart to have a good support in your team so you can keep those buffs up. And there are a ton of ways to enhance your characters. A really nice system is that you can see reviews and feedback from the community on which equipment is the best for the champion you are using and then seeing that pay off during a boss battle is amazing. They also keep updating the game like recently we got a brand new Hydra boss and there will also be special Valentine events. So totally click the special link in the video description or scan my QR code and if you are a new player you also get a free starter pack worth almost $30 with a brand new free champion Aina and a ton of other rewards that you see right here. And you will find these rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days so you gotta be fast. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring the video it really helps me improve the channel and now Joyce Let's go over those Odin powers. Quick reminder for those of you who haven't heard of these new powers yet, in this DLC you play as Odin in the mythical world of Svartalfheim, the realm of the dwarves. At the start he gets a device from one of the dwarves that allows him to acquire the powers of fallen enemies. This dwarven artifact is called the Hugerib, and how this artifact works is that it uses a special resource called Hugar. Not only can you get it from fallen enemies, aka all living things, and Joyce, sorry to interrupt, but I asked if you could also kill dwarves in the realm for the power because Ubisoft said all living things but sadly that's not the case only enemies <laughs> all right that's you really had to ask that huh but not only enemies i can assure you you also have these special uger blooms which look like this like gigantic plants there are also special shrines to yggdrasil the tree of life where odin can sacrifice a bit of his health to regain some uger there are many powers to collect in this realm five in fact so let's dive right into the power of the raven which lets you shapeshift into a raven as the name of already suggest. We of course saw this in the announcement trailer already but now here we see it in action where Odin kills a raven to take its power and uses it to his advantage. It works kind of the same as Sunin where you can explore the map, see interesting points further away, check how many enemies there are at a fort for example, but you can also use it to get to higher vantage points faster. You can land on any flat solid surface and you'll see an icon displayed where those points are triggering an auto land with just the push of a button. The power holds for 30 seconds or until you land you are also able to upgrade this power to unlock a special air assassination feature where while flying above an enemy you can land on top of them to take them out. Doing so counts as landing though and therefore deactivates the power so you can't keep spamming it. Where and how to upgrade these powers we will show you later in the video and check out the other powers. Of course if you liked the video so far then leaving a like on it would really help us out and subscribe to miss nothing on anything Assassin's Creed if you haven't already. The second power we've got is that of Muspelheim where Odin is not only protected from lava and fire but can also disguise himself as a Muspel to get through a busy area full of fire giant enemies. So yeah social stealth is back on the menu and it can be quite handy for if you need to rescue someone for example and don't want to track any attention or if you are just not in for a fight. The duration is for 25 seconds and enemies will jump into action if they figure you out or you get too close to them. The fact that this power also protects you from lava and fire can be interesting against the fire giants or going through puzzle areas where there are lots of spots covered in lava. You can easily just walk over them while the power is active and not taking any damage. Moving on to the other disguise power of the bunch, the power of Jotunheim. This one lets you trick frost giants instead of fire giants into thinking you're part of them but that's not the only thing you can do with this power. While it is active, dodging and rolling lets you teleport for short distances, and while using your bow, you can reach certain points in the world to teleport towards to. Yes, just like in the trailer, this is a real power you can use, and it looks awesome. We only have small footage of this while using it in combat, but how the bow teleport works is via these special world knots. When you point around with your bow, an icon will appear to tell you that you can safely transfer yourself towards there, and we can also use it for strategy to teleport 
teleport from far away and assassinate someone, which looks really cool. The fourth power in the power line is the power of rebirth. It will charge your weapons with volcanic fire. Now, when you activate this power, every enemy you kill are quickly being raised up and reanimated back into the fight. Only this time, they can be on your side. That's right, you can have a group of Jotuns or Mospols walk beside and fight with or for you. Not sure how many you can take with you at once. In the footage we saw, there were at least five of them you can guide towards the enemies. So you can at least have a big group with you. This has a time limit and when that runs out, the enemies will fall dead again. No worries about them suddenly attack you, that won't happen. The fifth and final power is the power of winter, which lets you master the power of ice. They didn't quite discuss this one during the event, but in the upgrade power line, you'll recognize it by the icon of a snowflake. And in the gameplay trailer, they've shown a tiny part of the power in action where the frost giants are being frozen in place and then falling apart in pieces when attacking or shooting your bow, which looks really cool. And speaking of the upgrade power line, how and where to upgrade these powers? In Svartalfheim, there are several places called Dwarven Shelters, where Dwarven went into hiding to protect themselves from the acts of war. These shelters are hidden, so you have to find them first by looking for clues in the area, and eventually when you find and enter them, you can find a blacksmith there to upgrade your Hugo Rip. There are two options for each power and you need several different kinds of resources to upgrade them. You can find those while defeating enemies or exploring the world. And most of the upgrades are for extra time added to your power, looking at the hourglass figures. But there are also other extra options that can make them even more powerful, including the air assassination for the power of the raven. Here you can also upgrade your Hugo the Reaver, where you unlock a second Hugo bar to use two powers instead of just one. And here's the thing with these powers, you can't just switch them from a menu on the fly. In an interview with the creative director, he lets us know how it does work. The equipment, the equip powers, uh, you can't switch them from a menu. We no. really want for people to interact with the world in different way, not only uh, in the, uh, one particular way, but in various ways to, to observe, to explore. So this makes the world effectively more alive, more in, you are engaged as a player more with the, the world that we provide. So yeah, when you want to switch from a power, you have to find that power on a certain enemy in the world. You can see the type it carries via the icon above them, so you also have to remember which particular one you are looking for. That's quite a change from, for example, the ability menu where we can just switch them out quickly and yeah, that gives a bit of a challenge. And don't worry if you pick the wrong power. You can always take a power from an enemy you've already claimed or go to other targets with a different power to switch them out for your build of choice. The power from enemies will simply not disappear if you already claimed them once. And one final thing about these powers is that you can only use them in Svartalfheim and not in, for example, England or even the other realms already in the game. Which kind of makes sense because they basically designed this realm with the powers in mind, but who knows, maybe there will be, you know, a second DLC later in the year where we can use these powers. Already teasing a future FDL I see, Joyce. <laughs> Ooh, Mina, maybe, or maybe we should see this video soon, huh? <laughs> and that was it all for all the Odin powers. We will dive deeper into them once the DLC is out on March 10th. Can't wait to try them out for myself. If you like this content, a like on this video would really help us out. And subscribe to the channel to miss nothing on anything Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You can watch our previous video by clicking on the screen and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!